Hi everyone. My name is Kristen and this is the Queen City Yarn Dying to Knit podcast. This is episode 24. So if you're new, thanks for checking me out. If you're coming back, thanks for coming back again. This is a podcast about knitting and crochet and weaving and spinning and yarn dyeing. Pretty much just my adventures in making things. Today is Tuesday, February the 11th, and I'm coming to you uh, in South Carolina, just south of Charlotte. So I'm Kristen, and you can find me on and all my projects and my designs on Ravelry. I'm Kristen, and on Instagram, I'm Kristen C, and also Queen City Yarn. And you can find all of the hand dyed yarn at queencityyarn.com. So welcome, thanks so much for joining me today. I have quite a few things to chat with you about and show you. I have some finished objects. I have a ton of works in progress. And yeah, let me make sure my um, do not disturb thing is on. Because full disclosure, I already have recorded this podcast one time. <laughs> And I went to sit down and I do like the editing where I add in those little dealies with like my name and where to find me stuff. And I had muted the microphone somehow. So this is recording number two. So hopefully it won't show. Hopefully I don't speed through things. I'm gonna try to make sure that I say everything I'd like to say about all of the things that I have to show you today. So the first thing I'd like to chat about is my finished sweater. This is a Tide Chart by Amy Miller, and I knit it in Queen City Yarn Biddleville DK in our October colorway. And I will, I'm sitting on the floor, so I'll just kind of like get up to show you a little bit. I absolutely love the fit of this sweater. It's got a nice drape. The gauge that I knitted at it, the yarn has beautiful drape, and it's just super comfy. You can see where I added in that extra speckly skein um, for the sleeve, but it doesn't bother me at all. I totally love it. I've worn the sweater quite a few times already, and I'm really, really enjoying it. I actually, I love the fit of this sweater so much that I'm already planning on knitting another one. I have a pretty epic stash of yarns that I have collected and curated over the years that I've been a knitter. And I have some, a couple of really nice DK weight wool mize sweater quantities. And I think that my next one will be a tonal wool mize tide chart. So that will be coming sometime. I just cast on a new sweater, still have one on the needles and yarn, wound yarn up for two more. <laughs> I spent quite a bit of my Sunday uh, at the Kitchen Island winding yarn. So yeah, it's gonna be a little bit, but I'm definitely gonna make another one of these. I absolutely love the fit. It's super comfortable and it's casual, you know, which is really my style. So anyway, that's my first finish and the one that I am like super excited about and wearing all the time. I have two, three other finished things, all of which I am excited about. Um, this first one I will show you. Someone else is excited about it more than I am, <laughs> my husband. I knit him a new hat. And as you can tell, he has been wearing the heck out of it. It's, he wears it every day. He works from home most of the time. And uh, so he just like sits in his office all bundled up with his little wool hat on that I just made him. This um, is just, it's no pattern, it's just one that I just made and it's like a beanie style because that's his jam. He does not like a lot of slouch. I, on the other hand, am a super slouchy fan, but he's not. He wants it nice and snug to his head to keep his head nice and warm. So this is a hat that um, I bought the yarn for over the holidays. I went with my mom to her local yarn shop um, crazy for you in Leonardtown, Maryland. And I bought two skeins of this concept by Katia cotton merino yarn. The yarn really reminds me of wool folk luft that I use, you know, it's, it's black, so you won't be able to tell really well, but 
um, that I used for my turtle dove sweater. I think it's called Loft, the one that I used. Um, but it's like a mesh tube with merino blown into it. So anyway, it's really nice. It was really nice to work with. This is like a DK weight, maybe a worsted weight. I knit it at a DK gauge. The colorway that I used is Onyx and because he likes black. So I bought this yarn <clears throat> when I was home over the holidays with my mom at the yarn shop. And my intention was to cast this hat on and knit it while we were visiting family. But I didn't have my hat needles with me. Um, so I got home and just put it in the stash <laughs> and, you know, forgot about it. And then I was knitting on another hat and he was like, oh, how's my hat coming? And I was like, what hat? <laughs> the one that you bought yarn and you were going to knit me for Christmas. Oh, that hat. <laughs> so I rushed upstairs and got the yarn and cast on. And it took me like a day to knit. I cast it on that late that afternoon and finished it up the next day. And he has been wearing it ever since. Didn't get blocked. It was like a head block, you know? <laughs> he blocked it right on his head. So that... Um, that's another finished object and I stole it from him to show you guys and he loves it he loves it so much actually that he's asked for another one in like a sweatshirt gray color and he wants that same yarn he really likes that yarn so I asked my mom the next time she goes to crazy for you to pick me up if they have it in gray um, <clears throat> okay so I have two more finished objects to show the next one is a super duper cute Christmas ornament this is my January ornament. Last year I did an ornament a month. I'm planning on doing the same thing this year. And this is my creation for January. I totally made it up. I love him super duper, like love him so much. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna be making more of these. So the hat is knitted and I knit it up and decreased it and then I just tacked it down here on the side. And then I used crochet and did his beard and mustache and he is on the uh on a champagne cork <laughs> so that he would be a little round jolly old fellow and i'm very excited about him and i actually i used a t-pin <laughs> down in the bottom here to stick his beard on so that it would stay uh where i wanted it to stay and i just sewed it up into the hat or tied it up in the hat somehow and yeah I really like him I'm definitely gonna make another one I'm considering actually writing a pattern uh, for this because I think it's really cute and it was really fun to kind of combine knitting and crochet into one ornament and I really enjoyed that so little gnome Santa dude with a beard and mustache January ornament and I have not yet made a February ornament, but it may be another one of those guys. Um, so I can write up the pattern because he was a lot of fun to make. And then the last finished object that I have to show you today, I'm really excited about. Um, for the last few episodes, I've been talking about the studio series Yarn Club that uh, we're doing with Queen City Yarn. And this is our first year doing a yarn club and I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, just one month in, everyone seemed to be excited, so I'd like to show you the yarn from January. This is dyed on our Plaza Midwood Bulky. I did dye on a base that we do carry often. Um, for January, we will be trying out some other bases throughout the year, so if you're interested in trying something different, uh, look forward to that in the coming months. But this is the January Club colorway. It's called Life's a Beach. And the inspiration photo that I used was a beach photo um, with a bunch of shells on the beach. And the techniques that I used were some wash, color wash and glaze techniques. And then some very light handed speckles. The colors are all metals like rose gold, yellow gold, bronze, some rust, and uh, then just some light-handed speckles, which is a feat in its own because I like heavy speckles. <laughs> um, I enjoy heavy speckles, I but light-handed 
crisp speckles uh, can be very, very beautiful. And so I'm just pleased as punch for how this one turned out. There's some more of that speckle action. And so one of the things that I did as part of this studio series was found a couple patterns to recommend um, that were quick one skein projects and one of them was the no worries is a hat by stephanie lotvin who's telly bean knits and that's the one that i made <laughs> and i had such a good time knitting this hat it's all it's all very simple just knits and pearls and yes it's got a bit of slouch which i love and I love, I just love the way it turned out. I think the colors worked up really beautifully together. Um, and the other pattern recommendation was by Louise Tilbrook um, of Louise Tilbrook Designs. And it was called the Self Care Cowl, which is really beautiful. And um, I know some people are making that and this is just gorgeous. And the designers actually, uh, for club members, did offer a coupon for their patterns, which was really, really nice. Um, so yeah, I just love the way this turned out. And so that's the January Studio Series. If you're interested in becoming a member of the Studio Series Yarn Club, look for that. February clubs will open on Saturday, February the 15th. And memberships will be available for one month, three months, six months or 12 months um, from February the 15th through February the 20th and then we'll close it down and I'll get all the February yarn dyed and ready to ship out to you guys so if you joined last month thank you so much it was really really fun sending out all those packages uh, to everyone and then also like getting some of the feedback that people really like the color or the the um, projects that I suggested as possibilities for using the colorway and it was a lot of fun. I spent yesterday down in the dye studio aka the garage <laughs> and designed February's colorway and I'm excited about it. It's not on one of the regular Queen City bases. That's the only hint I will give but it's really pretty if I do say so myself. So anyway, those are the finishes and yeah. So on the needles, I have a ton of socks <laughs> of which I have three works in progress, socks in progress to show you. I have a shawl, a hat, two sweaters that I have brought to share with you today. So we'll just start with what I'm knitting on now. And this is my DK weight sock that I've been working on. I'm using Regia Six Ply, the um, design line Arne and Carlos. And this is color 03657. I think it's called Summer Nights, but it does not look summery to me. So this is sock number two. Sock number one is already completed. I did a top-down sock with a tubular cast on. I used the Fish Lips Kiss heel and then just knit and did a regular wedge toe. So I am working on the second sock. I was able to finish the heel of sock number two um, on Saturday when we were out running some errands as a family. Thankfully, whenever we do that sort of thing, my husband drives, <laughs> which means knitting time. So while we were out running around getting the kids spring sports equipment, I got the Fish Lips Kiss heel done on sock number two. And I've just started working in the round. I think I'm like only three rows past that heel because I finished it like as we were pulling into the driveway after running all of our errands. And so that is this pair of socks. Uh, it's supposed to get cold again here on Friday for Valentine's Day. And I'd really love to have these cozy, cozy socks done by then. So I have a goal of getting these done by then. And if I will work on them, then it will happen. <laughs> but there are so many other things just wanting my attention. Um, so let me show you those now. I have two other pairs of socks I'm going to chat with you about. The next pair are my little booty socks that I'm working on, little shorty booty socks. And this, uh, I'm using a self-striping yarn. I'm using Post Yarn, 
which is a self-striping yarn made by Simply Socks Yarn Company. And it is a 75% Superwash Coriadale, 25% nylon blend in the Jollyville, Texas colorway. And I think when we were chatting last time when Janice was here, she described this as being very similar to Patton's Croy. And I think that that's very, a very true um, way to describe this yarn for the way it feels and the way it knits up. It's beefier than a regia, um, but it still is kind of toothy. Uh, it's just, it's knitting up at a really beautiful gauge. I did a top down sock with a couple inches of a uh, leg. These are gonna be for uh, wearing with booties. And a uh, heel flap, and I did the double gusset. The double gusset is now complete. I will show you that, because it's so pretty. So that double gusset is done, and now I am just working down the foot. I love this colorway of these socks. I think it's really cheerful and bright. I like the pink and the um, like aqua color in there. Kind of bumps it up from just being a plain old regular Christmas colorway and I think it's really pretty. And I also like how thin the stripes are. I think that's really different from um, a lot of the self-striping socks that I have been knitting recently. So I'm really enjoying these. This is still sock number one. Um, so obviously I haven't been in a super rush to get these done, but um, recently they've just kind of been living in the kitchen. So I'm, when I'm waiting for water to boil or something to cook where I'm just, you know, supervising a pot or something like that, then I will knit around on that. So that's those. And then the last pair of socks that I have on the needles are my um, creme de menthe shorty socks. This is yarn from the yarn jar. And I uh, finished sock number one. I did a top down, I did the tubular cast on, and then I did a heel flap and heel turn in Knit Picks Essential Solids in black. And I did the double gusset, you can see that underfoot. And then I did the toe also in the Knit Picks. I'm working on sock number two. I just finished the second gusset on sock number two. And so now I'm just knitting around. And these are actually like matching pretty perfectly. I think this black stripe may be like one <laughs> stripe longer. But um, so they're gonna be super easy to match and know, super easy to match and know when to start the toe because they're the same and they're matching. So yay that. And I just need to work on them. These ones are living in my purse. Actually, they have um, some hair on them from the last time I got my hair cut as I was knitting on them. <laughs> oh well. Um, so yeah, these are in my purse. And that is all the socks that I had to talk to you about today. I do have um, something new to show you. I cast on a hat. I was inspired by Janice. Last time she showed a finished hat that she had knit with Berry Hill and um, a mohair silk lace weight held together and I was smitten with it. It's very, very soft. And so she, she picked up the mohair silk at Black Mountain Yarn Shop during the indie extravaganza that they had during staff weekend at the end of October. And she told me she was gonna do this, do that hat. And it was turning out so pretty and so then I went to Black Mountain Yarn Shop <laughs> and uh, after the Carolina Fiber Frolic and I bought myself a skein of this yarn, which is really, really pretty. This is La Vienna May and it is the Kumo is the yarn base. It is a 74% baby Surrey, 26% mulberry silk and the colorway is head Hajila. Mm. <laughs> I think that's right. And so it's this really beautiful, it's a lace weight, super duper soft because of the alpaca. And I am holding that together with Berry Hill in our hydrangea colorway. Our Berry Hill yarn is the yarn that we have milled exclusively for Queen City yarn. And that is a 
80% domestic merino, 20% alpaca blend, non-superwash, and it's a fingering weight. And so I'm holding these two together and, hold on, I got my yarn caught. And I'm knitting a hat. It, it's giving me about a DK weight gauge and it is so fluffy and so squishy. I don't know if you can see the halo on it, but it is just like, it's fuzzy. It's so soft. It's crazy, crazy soft. So I cast on this hat and I'm just knitting away on it and I'm really enjoying it. It's like knitting with butter. It is so, so soft. The combination of these two yarns is super luxurious and I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, so that's the only hat that I have on the needles right now. So, yay. All right, so there's that. Okay, that's a new one. Let me show you my shawl. This is the Ashbrook shawl by Tammy Gore. And I have been working on this for a while. It's kind of slow going because I don't knit on it a ton at a time. I go in little spurts. So since the last time I recorded a podcast, I have made some progress. I've finished a couple of sections since the last time. I'm pretty sure that the last time I podcasted, I was down at this little marker here. So I was in this garter stitch section of uh, the Copper Penny colorway. So I've made quite a bit of progress since then. It's still, there's still a long way to go on it, but I did this really cool slip stitch slipped stitch section and another garter and another slip stitch and one of the things about this like slip stitch section is the way these arrows turned out in the center I think they looked so pretty I think that might be my favorite part of the um, of that section the way those knit up and it's just gonna look really beautiful blocked so I'm working on another garter stitch section the yarn that I'm using for this project is Old Soul Fiber Co um, Here's the tag. And my friend Danny dies for Old Soul. She dies with Sam for Old Soul. So the colors that I'm using are London Fog, which is a really beautiful speckle. I'm using Copper Penny. And what's this one called? Raspberry Truffle, which is a really beautiful. I really like this yarn. I'm enjoying using this base. This is a, a two-ply. It's called the Soul Twist base. I'll show you one of the tags. This is the London Fog. Soul Twist. So it's an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and it's a two-ply. And so uh, it's got a different hand than like the regular four-ply like of our Noda. So I'm really enjoying it. It's a little beefier. It's a little more bouncy. Um, it's really good for shawl knitting. So I'm really enjoying this project. It is slow going because like I said, I've been more focused on other things like sweaters. Um, so yeah, put this pattern in here or I'll be like, now what do I do? <laughs> okay, so I have two more projects to show you. Um, this one you have seen before, but I've made quite a bit of progress on this sweater. This is Sophie by Amy Miller. It is a bottom-up v-neck sweater with uh, set-in sleeves, but you like pick them up and knit them down, uh, which is what I still need to do. <laughs> so the last time I showed this sweater, I was here. I still had another decrease to do on the side, and then this is the back. This is the front. <laughs> Some peculiarly placed <laughs> stitch markers. That was where I uh, separated and I needed to measure to make sure that they were the right length. So those can come off of there. Actually, I'll talk about these markers. I think I mentioned them the last time when Janice was here, but my mom got me these for Christmas. Um, so this is what it looks like and I am loving these they are colored sp split ring markers they're by Coco Knits and I really really like them like way better 
than the locking bulb stitch markers because they stay in place but you don't have to open and close them and they're also not as sharp as the bulb markers so they don't really split the split the skein split the yarn I really like them if you don't have some of these you should totally get some because they're awesome I got them as a Christmas gift for my mom so the yarn that I am using for this project is Nightshades by Harrisville Designs, the American Cormo. And the colorway that I am using is VCR. This yarn is really nice to work with. This sweater weighs like absolutely nothing um, because it is a woolen spun yarn. So it's gonna be warm, but it's very, very light. I am just enjoying it, knitting with it so much. I'm really, really excited about this sweater because of the yarn um, but uh, and the color, which I love, and you can't really see, maybe you can see a little, it is black with green, like a, like a Kelly green kind of spun into it. Um, but I'm super excited about this sweater even more after a knit night last week or the week before last when I hosted a knit night, and my friend Lori brought hers over and I tried hers on. And I just absolutely love the fit. I love a V-neck. Um, and the fit on this sweater is really great. So I still have to do the neck edge and I have to pick up and knit the sleeves down. I just finished the um, fronts and backs and joined those sleeves and I haven't worked on it again because I cast on another sweater. <laughs> and the other sweater that I cast on is another one that's because of my friend Lori. I had no intention whatsoever of knitting the love note by Tin Can Knits. I was not going to do it. I was not going to jump on that train. It's really pretty though. But I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. And then Lori brought hers over and I tried it on. And I fell in love with it. I did. I just fell in love with it. So, but I was like, okay, well, I didn't have any of the mohair silk in my stash. And I wanted to use stash for it because I, I wanted to cast on like immediately <laughs> that's how much I loved it when I tried hers on I like had to cast on right like right away um so but I didn't have I was looking in the stash I was trying to decide what I was going to use and I ended up deciding I was going to use this by the Sanguine Griffin it is called Gaia Gaia Lace the colorway is poppy. It's like an orangey red. And I bought this at Maryland Sheep and Wool probably before Caitlin was born. It's been in the stash for a while. I have three skeins of it. And this yarn is like luxury to the max. It is 40% cashmere and 60% silk. In two ounces, you have a 420 yards. It's, um, it's beautiful to work with. And I originally bought it with the intention of making like a lace, very lightweight lace cardigan um, that I was going to wear to work. But I never did make that. I'm glad I didn't because now I have it in my stash. So I was looking at this. I was trying to decide what yarn am I going to hold with it. And I pulled out, I have some pinks and I pulled out some pinks and I was thinking maybe a pink you know, pink that, uh, like variegated, hand-painted yarns, pinks that went into reds and stuff like that. So I thought about that, but I didn't have a fade in the stash with as much red as I wanted it to have. And I looked in the Queen City stash and I didn't have a variegated that I wanted to use, like a hand-painted skein that I wanted to use for this. So then I was hemming and hawing and what am I going to do? And then I was thinking about Berry Hill and I was like you know I could use Cardinal with it and it could be red red and I could knit it right now and for Valentine's Day <laughs> like right now I cast this on yesterday <laughs> and I'm using Berry Hill yarn which is Queen City's exclusive yarn that we have milled for us at Echo View Fiber Mill 
locally up in the North Carolina mountains, and that is an 80% domestic merino, 20% alpaca. It's a non-superwash, and I'm using the Sanguine Griffin Gaia Lace with it and holding them together. And so I cast, I cast that on, <laughs> and I knit the entire yoke yesterday. It was super um, addictive. Like I said, I was very excited and decided I wanted to knit it right now and wanted it to be for Valentine's Day. I don't know if I'll get it done. Uh, that will depend on if I get to see Janice to get the other skein of Cardinal because she's got a skein. Uh, one skein is not going to be enough, um, but she's got most of another skein and that will be enough. <laughs> so um, it's really working up pretty. It doesn't have the halo that the mohair silk has but it's cr incredibly soft and it has this beautiful sheen from the cashmere silk lace weight and the depth of color with the cardinal berry hill because it's a more a, a darker dye and i'm really loving it i think it's going to be really really pretty um and I think it'll be beautiful. I'm very excited about it. I only have like a few rounds to go and then I get to separate the sleeves off. I mean, I'm practically done with this sweater. <laughs> Not really, but I'm really excited about it. Um, so I just need to get that other scheme from here from Janice. And then I'll have another, another sweater. And I think it's gonna be super cute with, I've got like a flowy kind of long tank top. Um, that I wear with jeans or leggings with shorter sweaters over top and then I also have a couple of really cute um, like linen dresses that are um, fitted you know down to like empire almost and then flowy and I think it'll re look really cute with that too I'm gonna do a cropped version of it and I think I'll do like three-quarter length sleeves assuming I have enough yarn sleeve length will definitely depend on the amount of yarn that I have so yeah, I think that's all the projects that I have to show you today. Um, let's see, what else do I have to talk to you about? I didn't bring any, any yarn over to show. <laughs> um, but I did, I did mention about the studio series that's opening up on Saturday, the 15th of February. If you'd like to join me on this wild, fun, colorful uh, ride, We'd love to have you. Um, other than that, upcoming events for Queen City uh, is the Virginia Beach Yarn Getaway, which is happening in a couple of weeks in Virginia Beach. And Janice will be there for that. We have quite a few things coming up. If you want to stay up to date on what's going on, you can check out queencityyarn.com and we have a list of events uh, that you can come and check the yarn out at and likely meet Janice because she's the one who travels to all of those things. Um, oh. Hold on just a second. I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. I almost forgot about a giveaway. <laughs> so, y'all know about my love of enamel pens, right? I showed a couple, sorry for the crackling, it's in, it's in plastic. I showed a couple of episodes ago the yarn pin with the crown. I have a crochet version with a hook sticking out and Janice, I got her the knitting version with knitting needles sticking out. Well, the designer behind that pin, uh, Channy, Channy P, um, ChannyPeasCorner.com. She contacted us and wanted to offer some pins as a giveaway. And this is one of her newer designs. It says, Yarn is my caffeine. And it is an awesome coffee cup full of yarn. And she sent three of these for me to use as giveaways for the podcast. So thank you so much to Channy. Um, and so there's going to be a giveaway for three people are going to win this pin. And to win, uh, all I want you to do is give me a comment. Let me know what project are you working on right now that has you excited about your knitting or something that you're dying to cast on or your favorite sweater. I don't know. Just say, hey, 
<laughs> if you're interested in winning um, one of those enamel pins. So you can leave a comment here on YouTube. You can leave a comment over in the Ravelry group, Queen City Yarn Ravelry group, where I will post an episode thread for this episode, which I totally forgot to do last time. So when I post this one, I will post <laughs> episode 23 also. <laughs> um, but let me know what you're working on. I would love to hear what has got you feeling inspired and excited about your craft right now. It could be knitting, crochet, anything. Anything fiber arts related or not even. Let me know something else. Are you making a candle? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Let me know what you're doing and how it's bringing you joy. And that will enter you to win one of those enamel pins. Um, I will leave it open until, um, I guess for uh, maybe two weeks, I think. Sounds good. Hopefully I will be podcasting again in about two weeks, but I'll close it um, in about two weeks. And yeah, good luck. I hope you win. And then you can fill your bags with pins and they can get really heavy. I was actually... <laughs> <laughs> that sounded bad. They do get heavy. But the reason why I said that is because I was watching, who was I watching? I was watching somebody's podcast and they had this beautiful like framed cork board. No, it wasn't. It wasn't a podcast. It was on Instagram. It was Lola Bean. Um, Lola Bean Yarn Co. She showed, it was a picture on her Instagram and it was like a frame, like a picture frame with cork inside and she had all the pins stuck on there and it was absolutely beautiful. And I have a wall um, over in my office that I was like, something like that would look really cool there. And so maybe if I did that too, I'd be more likely to change the pins out on my bags because I have bags that are completely full of pins and um, I don't change them around very often. I just leave them on those bags. So they don't always get loved to get seen, you know, if I'm not using that bag right now. So I think that would be really cool. And then I could like pick the pin <laughs> that goes on the bag for the project. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen something like that. I think that would be really cool to do and to have um, on display uh, more than just on the bag that I'm knitting on and then I can put them on my bags but anyway enter to win some pins <laughs> and yes I think that's it for this week thanks so much for joining me um, I hope that you are making something that's bringing you a lot of joy and until next time happy knitting bye